back to Terra Invicta, and if we are going to end this fight, we are going to need to go back to where the aliens have set up their base, and that means mission to the outer planets is now completed. Uh, this unlocks a quote from Kiran Banerjee, who is talking to his partner. Um, yeah, okay. Um, gives you a little bit more of his backstory in just one quote, and also allows us to send probes to uh, Uranus, Neptune, and the far-flung areas of the solar system, the Kuiper Belt in particular. Now, we will, of course, maybe probe those areas. I don't think it's particularly important. I'm going to go advanced vision systems for reasons that may become relevant later. Um, but let's just see, for example, how long would it take to send a probe? Take 10,000 days to send a probe to Halmia from Earth. So you don't, you don't really want to do this. Like, you're not interested in these sort of 9,000-day probing missions. Uh, Neptune and its moons, for example, how long would that take? 5,692 days. So instead, what we need to do is produce a science ship that can go to all of these different locations. Um, I think we still have one design. Pretty sure, let's just check before we build the wrong one. Was it the Oz Post? Yep, it's the Oz Post with the science lab. So we'll just queue a couple of those up for construction. Where's the good old Aussie post? Oz post. And we'll construct a few of them around probably 14. Let's build two around 14 Irene orbit uh, and one around low Mars. And that should give us all that we need in order to hit our critical objectives in terms of scanning. We just need one per system, really. And they can duck around uh, doing probe of these out, outer sort of objects. Um, now, some of these might be rich in resources, like that's decent. But I can't imagine in an ordinary playthrough anyone doing much settlement in the Kuiper Belt. Like, I can't imagine it happening. We might go to Pluto just for style points. I think going to Pluto would be, you know, a nice way to style on the aliens. But that sort of utopic styling on play, I think that can wait for another playthrough. I think Humanity First is about finishing the fight as efficiently as possible. And there's a lot of aliens still to kill, so I'll get to it. Now, in more ways than one, the human war machine is revving up to speed. Battle Group Neiden, made up of four new Flight 2 Auckland-class battleships, has launched from one of our asteroid shipyards. So let's go launch them. They will be providing reinforcements to Jupiter uh, because IO shipyards are still choked with build requirements. Uh, and as a result, I'm building some of them out in the asteroid belt. It should be a relatively short hop for our new technology to jump out to Jupiter. I do want to clear out some of these locations at point... Um, these stations and whatnot have got to go, but the Titans have started to come online, so there you are. Um, the other thing that is changing is back on uh, back on planet Earth. Now that we have the ability to sell alien technology and antimatter, you know, completely harmless commodities to the Earth markets, market solving our money problem, and indeed I intend to ramp up antimatter production yet further, we can turn our mind, now that we've got mega nations, to using direct investment. Direct investment isn't usually a very good deal in small nations, but in big nations it's a fantastic idea. I've also consolidated um, this island over here, so Taipei uh, City is apparently one of the biggest mission controls. I, th I think they say the mission control center is in Taipei. Oh, it just says National Space Organization Headquarters. Anyway, it's uh, eight mission control there as well, so we're doing pretty well, but let's unleash the direct investment. This is the Eurasian Union. Uh, its problem is that it's got a low rest cohesion value because inequality is pretty high. So I figure let's just direct invest 117,000 cash and 560 influence into doing 200 investments in the welfare priority. I don't know what, the, let's do 100 to start with. I don't know what this will achieve, but let's find out together. All right, it's now got low inequality, 2.8. Uh, let, let's, let's do it again. There we are. Now, that is our limit to annual direct investments for the year, but we have now pulled in inequality down to low, um, which the rest cohesion is still, still not great, but we'll bring that down below 2.0, and that had a side effect of cleaning a bunch of CO2 from the atmosphere. I can always just sell more stuff in order to make up for it. I might need some influence generating stations in orbit, but it's okay for the moment. I want to do a bunch of economy investment uh, in places 
in other places. My problem is I don't want to push this cap up too high, considering the next step is going to be to clear the protectorate and the servants out of their home in the Middle East and Africa, etc. There is a nation that we can use to do that. I'm researching it now. It's called the Caliphate. Uh, you can use that starting in Saudi Arabia, and then it gets claims on an awful lot of stuff. We can use that to throw the servants and the protectorate out of their current bases in places like Saudi and Iran. So that's the power of direct investment when you have basically infinite money, or, well, not infinite money, but functionally infinite money. Um, as for China, uh, also requires some fixing. The main problem here is, again, inequality, um, but I'll have to sell more stuff. Oh, direct investment in China is very expensive. Direct investment in China is very... I mean, we can pay it. I'm mostly worried about the influence. Um, but yeah, okay. And we want to take over the rest of the control points first. So let's 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 say, wait on that one. Uh, I, have, I have plans for fixing China even at this late stage because I think in any future playthroughs, uh, I want to practice a little bit more with China. In any case, the war machine is rolling along back shortly. Our scanning ships are now coming online, so we'll transfer one to Uranus, uh, one to Sat uh, Saturn, I believe. No, Saturn's already being scanned. Uh, one to Neptune, then. So we'll make this SG Neptune. It'll need to launch first. Take me there, transfer. Let's transfer to Neptune. Let's transfer to high Neptune orbit to start with, and I'll give you a transfer window of 36.97 weeks. You can do it in 23, but burning almost all your Delta V. Uh, I'd like you to have some to maneuver when you get there, so maneuver like that. That should be enough for you to maneuver around in system, scanning all the various objects. And then final, Foxtrot 219. You're going to Pluto. Low Pluto orbit. And you can get there in 44.02 weeks with a good amount of Delta V to spare. Um, these may eventually be joined by platform ships, but for the moment, they're just scanning. Should be simple enough. The other thing we've done is Task Force Omega, consisting of the, uh, the battleships Otago, Ballarat, Townsville, Geelong, and the Titans, Kamiya Raja, Sahiba Upendra, Max Pashado II, Nero II, Tomi Nagai, Vincent R. Phoenix, and Hans Castillo are on their way to Make Make. I figure if we're going to have to go there eventually, we may as well destroy the station in orbit. It's going to take ages to get there. So let's lock down orbit and as many of those stations as we can, and then go from there. If I need to transfer a counselor to Make Make once I've won space superiority in the region, I can do that using another ship that I'm designing. Um, one that uses antimatter propulsion to get there just a little bit quicker. And then there's the scan of Titan that's complete. Um, so I have a task force that's arrived in the uh, Saturn system, essentially. Uh, task force Anzac, so it's a combination of Marines uh, and this thing, the Malleus class Lancer. Uh, intended because it was designed for the conquest of Titan. It's carrying a fusion outpost kit, which means we should be able to put a base on the surface, and that base can then put up a construction module and essentially start establishing ourselves in this subsystem. So the construction module will also finish, uh, I think, in May, which will allow us to be put up a station in orbit, uh, refuel the fleet, and begin our inevitable conquest of Saturn and its moons. Well, that's appropriate. And you know, we may be harsh defenders of mankind, but we are still defenders of mankind. So I finished climate change mitigation, which will improve the ability of welfare to remove carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide from the atmosphere, and importantly, also eliminate all oil core research uh, resource regions. My understanding is that resource regions means that when you invest in the economy, you get more GDP than you otherwise would. The economy grows faster, just like having core economic regions. The problem is the more resource regions you have, the more inequality you create and the more CO2 you create every time you finish the economy priority. Now those are gone. Uh, they're just off the map because we're, we're doing clean energy now. Um, there are still some non-oil-based resource regions, but the oil-based ones are all gone. So we're still, you know, mining and stuff. That's still going to have a deleterious environmental impact. But we're not exactly pumping oil and gas much anymore because, you know, 
we're doing fusion and firing plasma at people in space. We're kind of past that point. So what I'm basically saying is humanity first and their global agenda, like humanity first 2040. Um, and if we do like an academy playthrough in the future, we've really got to try and build a globally united, environmentally friendly utopia, just as an extra difficulty objective, I think, because we're certainly getting there. Uh, it'll take a while to start reversing global warming. It's very, very difficult to do. In fact, we're still seeing mild increases in atmospheric carbon dioxide and atmospheric methane. Heating is now up to 1.8 degrees. It's going to take some real effort to reverse it. But if I can unite enough of the planet, it's probably possible. And that would be a happy ending to our story. And while we're on the topic of mitigating global warming, let's also crush some inequality in China. 100 points of direct investment, which is a couple of points of exotic. Go. Eh, 0.5 is a difference. That's all right. That's all right. We'll get there. We'll get there. It'll certainly speed things up. Dumping 81% um, dumping of the economy into welfare should also help. We just got to get this inequality in China down. Then we can talk about rebuilding the economy. We've also launched our second fleet of Supermax Titans. These ones instead based around Jupiter, and they're going to go and clear out the alien base that has long haunted us at Ganymede. These ships are the Europa, the Asia, the Africa, the North America, and the South America. Really need to launch number six so I can have an Australia for the set. But in any case, for now, it's not worth waiting. Let's fly to Ganymede, Shattered Sky Station, and engage the enemy. That'll take us three days to arrive. I'm hoping that with the firepower of five rather than four vessels, it should be possible to complete without a loss, but we will ultimately see. I don't want to wait for the second generation to come around. I want to eliminate that station sooner rather than later. Let's go. Finally spawns. After all that time, it finally spawns. The Daedalus Torch, the engine I've been waiting for to power all these bloody things. All right. Let's research it. Maximum priority will deprioritize the Pion Torch because that's a meme engine that I want to use for one particular vessel, uh, but I probably don't need it immediately. Um, let's get the Daedalus Torch finished by 10 January. I don't think we're going to need it, but it'll be really useful if we need it. Um, it's a Deuterium Helium-3 terawatt capable drive, one of the best engines in the game, so let's complete it. Let's uh, downgrade Genies because that's mostly about life extension technology for our counselors. So we'll lower that. Let's get this finished in a month's time. Assassinations happening on Earth just to keep the Protectorate and Servants Violence under wraps. Stabilizing the Eurasian Union. And is this our battle notification? It is. Fantastic. Okay, so the Shattered Sky Station has four ships in situ, but that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, we'll create a short wall centered tight and engage. Hopefully that gives us the formation that we're after. Start the battle. So this should give us, yes it has, it just gives us a nice tight formation starting relatively far out from the station. We should engage the small vessels first and then we can start priority targeting the defense arrays. Looks like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, at least 10 defense arrays. Looks like 12 according to the readout, but that is that. Uh, we're just gonna drift. We're just gonna drift. We're gonna go in as slow as possible might even reverse our burn at the maximum distance, but I think the uh, aliens will be able to reach us too. Once we hit a thousand kilometers, uh, we should be able to engage with our heavy plasmas. There they go, shots out. Okay, kill one, kill two, kill three. Enemy missiles incoming, but those, those plasmas should kill the Whispering Veil. Yep, Whispering Veil down, fantastic. Now it's a case of engaging the station. Missiles should be fieldable for our PD. Let's see. ECM engaging, so you can see some of them exploding prior to impact. That's the advanced 60% ECM uh, chance, blasting them before they even get into PD range. Let's now close in. What is the distance to the closest layered defense array? Okay, we are now engaging from a thousand kilometers out. All right, good engagement. Looks like Europa has taken a hit to its tin droplet radiator, which means I'm gonna have to watch the heat. 
if it starts to overheat, I'm going to have to turn off its weapons at the very least, because otherwise, I'm told that last time what happened to the Max is it actually ended up cooking due to heat issues. Uh, that's a very unlucky hit on its radiators. It's got heat sink capacity for the moment. It's got heavy lithiums. But if it starts to burn up, what we can do is um, disable the weapons to lower the rate at which she's acquiring heat. That's three arrays down, engaging the fourth. Fifth is down. Sixth is down. Let's engage number seven. South America has also lost its radiators. That happens to unlucky hits, unfortunately. And with the tin droplets, I cannot retract them. They are low profile. They're very unlikely unlikely to be hit, but they are. They can be hurt. Nose armor integrity is holding up on the Asia. 96.5% armor, 85% structural. So we're getting some through armor quits. That happens. But the enemy firepower should be falling off pretty quickly. Okay, they're down to five layered arrays. Let's engage this one. Four enemies remaining. Europa's heat situation is okay. Asia and South America also holding up reasonably well. Enemy is down to three layered arrays. Two. Range is now 500 kilometers. They'll be getting better armor penetration effectiveness, but we've got a lot of armor. Like, this is the point, right? The point of having all that armor plating, and it still might be too much at 160, which is, you know, it's still like five meters of plating or four meters of plating or something, um, is even if they ignore, t like, 80% of it, if they ignore 80% of it, it's still like a meter of armor. Which is a lot when you're talking about diamondoids. Okay, final defense array neutralized. Uh, three Titans lost their radiators. Three took some armor damage, but no actual casualties. The station and all of its escorts are neutralized. Fantastic. Uh, let's now select these guys. And as soon as they become available in just a few minutes, take me there. We will attempt a HAB assault, just for the extra intelligence that you get, um, and then the Marines will blow the station. We don't, we don't actually get to hold the station, un except under very specific circumstances, I believe. Um, so let's see what intelligence we can collect from the station, and then get those Titans repaired and deployed to hit another base. Uh, let's up our... Oh, I need to go, interce I need to go intercept a guy in Tiangong orbit. I've cleared all the Hydra operatives from Earth. I would not like them landing anymore. Thank you. Earth is for humans. Good job, Marines. Shattered Sky Station is destroyed, and with it, the last remaining presence of aliens in the Jovian system. That feels pretty damn good. And in terms of humanity's presence, Ganymede now already has 6,500 crew operating across its surface bases, and many more will arrive as rest complete. Io's population is up to nearly 13,000 and increasing. Callisto is home to 2,500. Um, and Europa has 1,660, but again, I believe that is increasing. We could plant more mining bases, but at this stage, I think the economy is sufficient to support constant Titan and Dreadnought construction and to drive the aliens out of our solar system. So I might give it another month or two, let some more months, uh, mines come online, and more particularly more mission control come online, so that to make sure that building bases doesn't interrupt fleet construction by leading to an MC problem. Now the aliens are starting to adapt. I'm starting to see more of these new shimmering Corona class destroyers with 512 centimeter lasers rather and uh, backed up by additional lasers rather than the old mag and missile combinations. So this might be more of an even fight, but a lot of these are older mag missile ships that basically can't hurt Electo and Harrow. Let's go into combat and eliminate them. Every alien ship destroyed is a step closer to our final objective. The more things change, the more they stay the same. And with the new Flight 2 ships, you can see that uh, the electronic countermeasures are doing a lot of work on missiles before they even get close. At this stage, we'll probably engage the Fluttering Leaf. PD is engaging some of the incoming. I suspect there's a visual glitch at the moment with the PD, but um, because we're not seeing it, we're just seeing ECM. 
we'll move into a pursuit pattern. And especially with the, the flight two and three upgrades, this is getting less and less, uh, less and less even as a fight. Eternal Storm will be destroyed, and then it'll just be a pursuit of the Valiant Phoenix. Nice kills. That's 10 more exotics to fund Project Utopia back on Earth. In these final days of the war effort, there will be no letting up. It'll be constant coups, assassinations, everything to hold our opponents down and keep them below that 20% marker. Uh, you would have seen that we just got the Daedalus Torch, which we'll look at in a moment. Uh, let's, let's grab ecological stabilization programs because, well, what else are we going to do at this point? I guess we also need the Caliphate. Uh, Advanced Vision Systems is coming along. Uh, the Pion Torch, the meme drive, Working on the meme drive, uh, it should be ready, and this is going to be, I think, used to power the taxi that will take um, whichever counselor we select to deliver the payload at Marke Marke. This is the engine that will do it. It's hilarious. I'll show it to you in a bit, or at least I've been told it's hilarious, so I'm researching it now. Let's just run time a little bit so that Max can stage a coup in Saudi Arabia, because that's where our next stage of expansion, there it is. To throw the aliens, uh, alien lovers out of basically everywhere on Earth is continuing. We've got the CP available to us, so there we are. Advanced fission is done. Do we want antimatter weaponry? Uh, I think we just keep raising the global fusion level at this point um, with proton boron fusion. Like we can just pick, we can just fuse whatever, man. We can 20, 2040, human can, human can, uh, humans can fuse basically whatever you choose to. Jupiter is in low Ganymede orbit. That's fine. They finished their interception, so they need to refuel the Io Fortress. Fantastic. Uh, what is the current state of power balance in space? We have... The aliens have 52% of the fleet power in the system. We've got the other 48%, or we have 40%. The resistance has 2%. Um, so we're going to, need to keep grinding them down, but I'm hoping we can force some battles at Maki Maki. We can destroy some major stations. Um, I'll refuel the Titans, destroy some more bases. We will we will be able to grind them down. The industrial base is just too strong. Speaking of which, let's design. Let's just see. I had been designing a next generation Titan uh, using this antimatter plasma core drive because it gave three times. No, six times the acceleration that we were capable of with our other one. But let's have a go at the Daedalus Torch with an Inertial Confinement rea uh, Terawatt Reactor 3. Uh, and then we're going to need to reduce these propellant tanks way, way down. Alright, so this can increase our... This Daedalus Torch will increase the acceleration of our ships by a bit more than double. Like, it'll increase their speed by about twice, and then we can give them heaps and heaps and heaps of reach, which also lowers transfer time, because it means your ship can burn more of the trip. You can be burning more of the way out and more of the way back. So it's a toss-up between giving a ship 2.6 kps and the Daedalus Torch, um, or putting the antimatter drives on them uh, and giving them more acceleration but less delta V. I think producing a couple to this basic design with this huge amount of delta V and pretty good cruise acceleration, to be frank... Um, will actually get them places pretty damn quickly. So I might construct one of these. Let's take one of these laser en engines off. Let's throw an advanced ECM on. Although I'm actually considering... I'm legitimately considering, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to take an outpost kit with me because the, the PD in concentration is good enough, and this means that each one of these vessels is capable of refueling us along the way. We're going to switch the design to the more the fancier type of design, essentially, on the Titans. Um, what class of vessel... I'll, I'll figure out a name for this class of vessel. Um, it's definitely a Titan. Damn it, I cleared the design. I'm going to reconstruct it uh, and maybe put some into construction. They should be... They won't be a hugely beneficial over the max, over the super max class in combat, but they'll get to their lo their target locations much quicker, which is the primary advantage of getting that Daedalus torch. All right, the Pion torch. Let me have a look at this engine because I was told if Max wants to fly to Make Make, uh, this is the ship to get him there quickly. So let's pick something with at least two utility modules because he'll need the things that make it go fast. Uh, I think the frigates have 
frigates have a whole bunch of utility modules, so do corvettes, okay? So a corvette could mount all that sort of stuff. I'm not sure if we're allowed to do it though. So this is a pion torch. Steady anti-proton hydrogen reactions generate charged pions that are guided by blah, 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 blah. 10 million newtons output. Propellant per fuel tank, five antimatter. That is hilarious. Oh my God, okay. Wait, I can add more thrusters, but it's already at the maximum possible speed because you can't do more than 2G sustained. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. It gets 3.4 thousand KPS on one tank, but one tank is like five units of antimatter, which is two and a bit months worth of production from all of our atom smashers. Oh, that's hilarious. This thing, this thing can go to Make Make in like eight weeks. That's hilarious. Um... I don't think it can fit these engines, can, these can it? It appears to reduce the cruise delta V, I presume because the vessel is super light. Um, so is there anything that we want to take with us? I mean, let's see, first of all, let's see what radiators we need to, okay, so the radiators don't slow it down that much. Uh, we'll mount a quantum battery. Um, you need a power plant, right? Antimatter beam core reactor. Okay, so now we're starting to slow down. All right, all right. 1.8 G sustained acceleration. We could always add an extra thruster, you know, to, to go fast, get, get get back up to speed. Let's change the style on the ship to the alternative. Um, not sure I like the alternative design, actually. I think I might stick to the stick to the basics unless there's a... Does the Escort have the same number of utility modules? Yeah, the Escort's got the same number of utility modules. What's the what's the, the alternative? Eh, it looks like a shuttlecraft. Okay. So, Pion Torch, Antimatter Beam Core Reactor, one propellant tank, uh, utility modules, it's max, so you better take some Elite Marines with him. Um, that increases the weight by 300 tons. I mean, you can take a science lab, uh, because we're going to make it go fast anyway. Take a science lab, and uh, do you want to take a... Do you want to take a platform kit? Take a platform kit just to be safe uh, in case anyone needs to refuel while we're out there. We'll add an extra thruster to make the cruise acceleration 2Gs again. It's got 1.8 k KPS, so we need to increase the propellant tanks again. Uh, to Three propellant tanks would, uh, would get us there faster. More thrusters wouldn't. In fact, um, to reduce travel time, Okay, please accept that the vessel that I am building here is a complete meme, okay? Just please accept this. Um, but if we do something like this, uh, we'll slap hybrid armor plate on it, just so it has like a little bit of protection. I don't think one plate does anything, but you know, I just want to be able to say that it's plated in hybrid armor. And then for hull weapons, like we could put PD on it, but it's going to slow it down. So I think we just I think we just do this. It's got a science lab. It's got a fusion platform kit for when it gets there. Um, the Marines are being carried on board the other vessels of the fleet. I'm pretty sure we could make this vessel carry even more Marines if we're worried that the um, existing ones won't be enough. But I'm pretty sure we'll be able to take the base with what we've got. So I'm pretty sure pretty sure this is what we've got. Um, this is definitely a transport. Um, uh, we're going to call this the Einstein class uh, because we are burning 20 units of antimatter, almost a year's production, in order to build a vessel which I believe can just do a direct transfer from Earth to Make Make in 35 days by just annihilating a shit ton of antimatter. Uh, it's actually it is it is considerably slower. If we add that, it is a sustained acceleration of eight, uh, 806 milli-g. So you'll be feeling 80% of Earth gravity the entire way because this thing is going to burn all the way out um, to the halfway point. It's going to flip around and it's going to decelerate. <laughs> it's going to decelerate the rest of the way. So there we are. That is the Einstein Earth to Marke Marke 5.23 week transfer. Save the design. Let's put one into construction. I don't think we'll be able to... Um, launch one straight away because we need to eliminate more of the alien fleet. But when it's time for uh, when Max needs a taxi, when Max needs a taxi, I, because I presume everyone's voting that Max Max gets to make the transfer. 
uh, that 20 units of antimatter will carry him out there in like 35 days. So we need to build that in Earth orbit. Spirit of Tasmania is almost done, so we'll add the Einstein behind it. Spirit of Tasmania is going to go link up with the fleet that's going out to Maki Maki. It's got a bunch of infrastructure on it, uh, sort of a backup to the Einstein. Um, and that will be that, I think. Awesome. Um, I might redesign that ship possibly to add marines instead because I'm pretty sure I'm sending the spirit of Tasmania if it gets there first, of course. Because this is going to take 20... This is the spirit of Tasmania. It's going to take 26 weeks to make the transfer, right? Um, but it'll be done soon. And its intention is to catch up with the fleet and it's taking like outpost kits and science labs, the things that I was going to have Max's ship take. But Max's ship would get there first. So, you know, there you are. Now, the spirit of Tasmania, with its basic antimatter drive, should be able to catch up to Task Force Omega before it actually gets to Make Make. Uh, it'll only have about 100 kps left in the tank, but in 22 April 2041, uh, it will be able to rendezvous with the fleet. Uh, we might also produce a backup, but we're building Max's taxi next. Meanwhile, another way we're going to establish space superiority, as well as just destroying the Xenos, is gaming the combat power figure. Uh, that's because uh, nuclear weapons, for some reason, are regarded as very, very powerful by the game, even if they're kind of hard to deliver. So is Delta V, armored protection, a whole bunch of other things. So I give you the Credible Threat Class Dreadnought, a ship which the game thinks has a combat value of 2,919, despite being relatively cheap for what it is. Crank out 10, maybe 20 of these things, and all of a sudden the aliens will be intimidated. Oh, good, Battlefleet Jupiter's in Ganymede. Um, this should allow us, I'll use the traditional uh, design for this one. Um, this nuclear weapons platform, as well as being utterly terrifying because it carries, what, 20, 40, 80, 120, 160 nuclear missiles? Uh, so that's a that's a heck of a ballistic missile vessel, 160 nuclear delivery systems. Uh, that'll give us a whole bunch of combat power to help offset what the aliens have and get to that 80% number, even if they've still got stragglers that we're chasing down. I do have the antimatter drives if we need to launch interceptions into the far outer edges of the solar system, but this will also give us just a little bit of additional benefit. Plus, they're very good at destroying surface bases if we need to. These things can bombard very, very well when not used through atmosphere. There's no PD on this thing. Um, it's just designed to be efficient in that respect, um, but we will build a couple. This little body out in the outer solar system is home to another alien mining base. We're narrowing these things down. Uh, they built another one, I believe, but currently the aliens have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mining bases, of which one is very early in construction and the other is in an early stage of construction. Uh, a lot of these are at Make Make, another one is being built over there, and there's some asteroid bases as well. But this is one of the remaining huge mining complexes, the Sacred Vision Base. So by now, you know the deal. Tarsport Hobart's Marines are going in, and the base will be no more. We're choking off the alien economy. I have 50 mining bases, either in production or um, completed. So either I'm building them or they're active. We're going to bring the aliens down to maybe six. And while their mining technology might be better, I doubt they have my mining bonuses. So in terms of raw economic output, there is a reason that when you look at my ship construction screen, it looks like this. I doubt theirs looks the same. And with uneven casualties now largely falling in my direction and my favor, I feel like they've <laughs> they're probably realizing that they've made a mistake. Humanity is kind of good at this conflict thing when you rouse us to anger, and we've been roused to anger. Task Force Omega, due to arrive 7 October 2041. This is also a great opportunity to validate something. If no Hydra agents appear as a result of that base being destroyed, I'm pretty sure that means there are no Hydra operatives on Earth. Tracked aliens, market, market. So we can see where all the alien operatives are. Uh, one is on board Victor 298, and the rest are on board market, market, because all the intelligence was in their base. And of course, alien threat level, uh, yeah, it's maximum. Um, I don't think there are any alien bases, just some Xeno forming. So let's have a look at where Victor 198 is. 
uh, 298 rather. All right, so 298 is out, is on its way into Earth. It'll arrive 11 May 2041. Not a chance. Uh, Earth's defenses are more than formidable enough to take him out. I, I, I don't know what they aim to accomplish. Let me just check something, by the way. These OzPost monitors... Yeah, they've got the science labs. Awesome. So... Uh, what I might do now is construct some very high speed, some more very high speed colony ships, because I reckon we want outposts in Pluto and Neptune and all that. I think we want a presence for mankind. So I will believe that uh, the Spirit of Tasmania class does that job pretty well. Let's just check. Has the outpost kit. So as long as the body has somewhere we can land, uh, the Spirit of Tasmania class should do the job and with that sort of acceleration and KPS we should be fine so I will find a place to build a couple more Spirit of Tassie ships. Spirit of Tasmania fantastic do I have any spare shipyards it looks like there's some basic ones in low I can build low IO orbit 51 days that'll get the first one ready and a second one we can build around Mercury, although that's going to take a while to get out of the gravity well. Anyway, leave it with me. The first transmission from the mission commander took well over an hour to reach Earth. The rings, they're even better in person. At this stage, I don't really care about 1k science output. I could increase my science, but there's no reason to. 21.5k per month is perfectly fine. This is Malleus Base on Titan. We will build this up into an outpost of humanity um, in the Saturn subsystem. So what, what yields will we get here? Not that the resources really matter at this point, but let's get a, a mining station. Let's get some fusion reactor farms. Let's turn this into a solid base for humanity. The construction module isn't quite done, and only once it is done will we be able to found stations in orbit, which is what we really want, because we want to be able to refuel. But for the moment, we should be fine. We'll slap a couple of layered defense arrays on it, because I don't, they build faster, and they should be enough, combined with the fact we have a fleet in situ. Um, we have the construction module. We'll need an agricultural complex for the whole thing, just as good practice. And then let's slap some command centers on it, because at this stage, Infinite MC is the name of the game. So we'll just keep adding them until we run out of electricity. There we are. So that's pretty much done. Uh, life is good. So Malleus Base is under... Wait a minute. We can't build a Marine... Can we build a company barracks? We can station a company of Marines on Titan. That's perfect. So here we are in the Saturn subsystem with a human base on Titan. Uh, we might have to turn off that mine when it turns on, I just realized, because it will trigger the uh, MC premium issue. But it's kind of cool, and I'd rather have built it and turned it off than not have built it at all. There's a lot still to explore with this system, but I want a refueling base first. In terms of the alien presence, uh, there's a small fleet, uh, three Corvettes, and a orbital station. Yes, an orbital station, but they shouldn't be too much for our fleet, so they shouldn't be able to come mess with us. The aliens are flailing, they have constructed another base, but I can respond now by producing even more mobile marine groups. In fact, I may go design a more advanced marine ship now, using a Daedalus torch, or actually I will use a Daedalus torch because we haven't unlocked the proper efficient antimatter engine yet. We've got the meme engine, the pion torch for Max's taxi, um, but the actual efficient drives are going to have to wait a little bit longer. A Daedalus torch and a whole bunch of marines should be enough to be an absolute terror for a number of these facilities. And we joke about the, Mer uh, the Mercury Dyson Sphere, but it is indeed growing. I'm building up more and more mission control stations, which will finish in about a year, just in case we need to build the Humanity for First Fleet to uh, stupid proportions in order to outfleet the aliens. Um, I've actually exhausted all of my base metals, spending thousands upon thousands upon thousands of it, putting ring stations with command centers, agricultural facilities, and defenses in orbit of Mercury. The cash upkeep is obviously going through the roof, but then again, I have more antimatter production coming online, and I have 718 exotics in the bank. As long as I keep blowing up aliens, I can fund the budget deficit. War at this point has become essentially self-funding. Uh, in fact, I can even go back to Earth and maybe do some welfare investment in China. Um, have the 
reinvestments or the investments have all refreshed. Fantastic. Um, so we can grow the economy of many of these countries. I think we need to throw the servants out of Iran. Um, I've taken Saudi Arabia. Now I just need to figure out how to release the caliphate out of Saudi Arabia. I'm not sure exactly how to do that. I'll figure that out off screen. Um, but the alien lovers at the moment control only 15% of Earth's regions. And I dread to imagine what their percentage of the actual, you know, economy is. Um, let's dump some money. I'll sell two exotics. Let's some, uh, dump some money into building up the Eurasian Union's economy because we've got inequality falling pretty quickly, which is good. Um, it's a full democracy, which was always our goal. Uh, we should probably increase knowledge investment at the expense of welfare a little bit to keep this full democracy figure ticking up. I'd like that to go all the way to 10. So let's do 100 points of welfare investment for 58,000. That gets it down to very low. And then let's do uh, of economy pushing the GDP per capita to 36,000 per person. Fantastic, which should also do great things for the economy. Uh, America, America's, America's already great. Like America's fine. Um, like let's improve the American economy. Done 55 GDP of $33 trillion. Uh, how much we got? We need to sell some more. Bank. Um, I can grow the Indian economy, but my control point limit is going to be a problem. Uh, let's do something about China's inequality situation. So let's do uh, 90 points of welfare investment in China. Okay, down to 7.2. Uh, and we'll sell six more to direct invest in India to the tune of 200 points of economy investment. bringing GDP per capita up to $20,000 per person, giving us a GDP output of 41 trillion. So 38 trillion in the Eurasian Union, 33 trillion in America, and uh, 41 trillion in India. Bear in mind, there are 2 uh, billion people in India and 700, 600 million in the United States of North America. Uh, so the living standards are still very, very much better in America. And then they're secondary in the Eurasian Union and India is catching up, but GDP per capita of 20,500 US dollars in real terms, not bad, and very, very low levels of inequality, which is nice. Um, in terms of global warming, fighting it is going to be expensive and difficult. Um, we're currently at 453.6 parts per million. I have a feeling that expanding the economy is still causing increases. I've heard rumors that even though the clean tech removes it from the general economy investment, it doesn't remove it from the impact of core economic regions, but I'm not sure. And if it is, and if that is true, it's not a high priority bug because it only really affects late game. I had almost forgotten that we needed to add this to the United States. So next mission phase, uh, we're going to add Greenland to the United States of Northern America. We uh, Let's remove the servants from another region. Um, and then I'm going to check in on how I do the caliphate thing. We've got a little bit of room in our control point cap and some levels up might buy us some more. So I reckon we can do some more expansion just to you know make sure the mission fires. Plus it's the principle of the thing. Why would you serve people that are getting their asses kicked? All right, I've just completed the genie's technology. Tell me that Castillo is not trying to build space marines. We need men who know no fear. We need men who don't let wounds slow them down. We need men who don't need sleep. Most of all, we need men who don't ask questions. And he says this in relation to a gene editing technology. Okay, um, I'm just going to assume that that's a reference. Uh, what am I going to research next? I think deuterium, deuterium fusion. Or do we want to unlock uh, antimatter weapons? Like, nuclear weapons are good enough. Like, a nuke does enough damage that if you can't kill it with a nuke, you don't really need, like, you don't need antimatter, but just because we can, I guess, uh, and because we're researching proton, boron, and hydrogen, lithium fusion anyway, uh, we'll just lower our energy bonus if we do too many at once, so this will be the go. And then once we unlock Methuselah therapies, we will do that. Um, but I do feel like we've broken the back of the aliens at this point. They can still send fleets, they can still harass us, but I'm now at the point where I can use exotics and antimatter. I've increased my production to almost three units of antimatter per month, uh, which means uh, we can cover a deficit of up to 90,000, 
uh, and our current deficit of 10,000 can be easily covered by those sales. And that's without dipping into the total value of our exotic stockpile at 15.7 million cash. Uh, and we won't use most of it. Um, I could switch over to exotic armoring, but that's so inefficient. I'd rather just sell the stuff in exchange for slowly making Earth um, more and more of a utopia. Uh, let's see how high we can get the economic growth and the uh, how low we can get inequality before we close out the game. Um, if I play the academy next, I'm going to try and build a utopia as like a handicap. I'll obviously have the difficulty, but I'm thinking if you have to build a utopia on planet Earth as well, then that's a complicating factor beyond just winning the game. Um, we should defend interest India and keep growing everything, but I think we're in pretty good shape. The reason I can't release the Caliphate yet is there's 125 days of executive consolidation, but I'm about to eat Greenland anyway. And continuing with Operation Utopia, let's clean up low Earth orbit just a little bit more. We've got a bunch of uh, anti-orbital weapons that should do the job. Get us nice and popular around the world. Let's just check where Humanity First is doing in the global popularity rankings. There we are, 45% popularity. The Servants have 5% and the... Sorry, the Servants have 3% and the Protectorate have 5%. I actually find the Protectorate number difficult to understand here. Like, how are there 5% of people on the planet who are like, let's surrender to the aliens when we're kicking their ass? Like... Maybe they just believe it's all fake news. Maybe they believe the aliens are holding back their real forces, and any day now they'll send in the real battle fleet, destroy it all, and conquer the world. Um, that's my best guess. We now have an entirely new squad of Super Titans, of Supermax class Titans, the United Kingdom, the South Africa, the Canada, the Australia, and the New Zealand. Uh, they're going to start cleaning up all of these bases in the asteroid belt. So in 13 July 2041, they'll hit their first one at 475 Oklo. I'm not sure how many of these bases we will need to clear out in order to um, finally convince the aliens that they have met their match, but they're still sending additional ships to attack, so mind you, they are all rallying up together. That's an improvement. Uh, low Ganymede orbit, however, is going to get more attention with everyone arriving in October or November, but that's okay. If they want to bring six new ships for me to destroy, I'm fully capable of doing so. I have, in fact, uh, lightened up the defenses around Jupiter a little bit, but only because, as you can see, I am now waging counterattacks across the solar system, destroying infrastructure and hitting bases. The Jupiter Titans, for example, are only... In 28 May, they will reach... QF99 and go to work. Max is up to his old tricks and the United States of Northern America is expanding into a truly North American organization. Guatemala is going to be absorbed this turn, Honduras after that. Uh, but hey, look, if you're going to be included into a country where the average GDP per person, man, woman or child, employed or not, the GDP is 55,800 US dollars and levels of inequality are low and education standards are higher than anything that existed in the world in 2022 and the democracy is almost literally perfect, well, who's to say no? The, the local people are, but you know, they're, they're being very well supervised by the hover tanks, okay? The, the, firing, the firing of the lasers and the coil guns is to entertain the crowds. There is something beautiful about ships with 2.7 thousand KPS in the tanks and the ability to burn lovely trajectories like that. Uh, four new um, Ultramax class Titans have been constructed on 187 Lamberta. They have their crews and they are ready to deploy to low 62 Arato orbit and eliminate the station there. Transfer time. 3.48 weeks engage. Hydra picked with the wrong species. And I think we'll close with the destruction of yet another station. These may be slightly older ships when compared to the new generation of ones using Daedalus torches and whatnot, but their firepower and armoured protection cannot be questioned. We found the answer. We found the answer to the formula the aliens asked us to solve. Ships that can survive the array of defenses against them with enough firepower to counter enemy defenses, get through their point defense, and clear their gigantic space fortresses from our solar system. Not a perfect weapon, but certainly a far cry from where humanity was a little less than two decades ago. Now we build gigantic warships the size of large terrestrial naval warships on Earth. We power them with fusion reactors, powerful drives, and we 
routinely deploy plasma weapons in space in order to counter the extraterrestrial invaders. How far we have come under the leadership of Humanity First. And so this is where I will leave the episode. The cleanup of the solar system continues, the consolidations of nations on Earth proceeds apace. China is about to, well, express its interest in servant Vietnam. The United States clears the initiative out of what is left of the uncontrolled components of Northern America. And Max's taxi that can take him to Maki Maki as the fastest man to ever fly has just launched from its um, the space yards around Terra. So next episode, our battle fleets should reach Maki Maki. It should destroy the infrastructure there and set the scene for the destruction of both a majority of the Hydra's mining bases, but also the entry point for Max and his elite marines. I hope you've all enjoyed, and I'll see you again next time.